Hi everyone, my name is Christine Bivick and I'm with FIRST Robotics Canada. I'm really glad that you're able to join me today as we explore FIRST LEGO League Explore and learn all about programming your WeDo 2.0. Thanks for joining us again today, Logan. I'm hoping that you can walk us through um, exactly what we're going to see when we first open our WeDo 2.0 software. So we've already downloaded it. Yeah, of course. So the first page you're going to see is this one here. It just shows exactly what you're going to need to use this. You're going to have the set that we do. This is just one of the um, building uh, buildings you can make that they have with you. Uh, and then it shows you you can use it on a tablet or laptop if you want to do that. Okay, so once you uh, enter the actual program, this is what it will show you. So it'll give you some teacher resources, some classroom projects, uh, and you can also start your first project, which is building project if you want to do that as well. Uh, and then the bottom left, uh, this is uh, your project. So this is how you start a program. That's what we're going to focus on today. So the plus with the square around it, click on that, it will bring you to this page. Right, so those are all the icons that we've gone through in the previous mm -hmm. video. Um, so if you aren't already familiar with those, you can go back and watch that video to get an idea of what each one of these blocks do. Okay, so uh, one of the more fun things you can do with this is play with the sound block. Uh, so we're going to bring out a loop here so we can repeat this. Uh, and then we'll bring the sound out. The sound block has this number, which I talked about earlier, which is associated with a specific sound. And they're all different. Uh, and I know my students that I work with, with my teams, just love sound blocks. They're so much fun. So this is a great place to start. And you don't actually need a WeDo 2.0 to use this program. And you can, so you can play with it. They can play with it at home, bring programs back to their team meetings to try out on their, with their um, WeDo 2.0. But it's a lot of fun and a great place to start because it really encourages exploring. Mm -hmm. So I'm just bringing out a numbers block here and connecting to the loop so we can set this for a certain number of times to go by. Okay. Uh, it will you know, do it four times. We're starting our program when we're playing sound number five for four loops, right? Yep. And then after it's done, those four loops, and the just program stop. will stop. Right. Yeah. So to make it a little bit more interesting, rather than repeating the same sound over, uh, we're going to change this out for a randomizer, which is the die here. Uh, and this will just give you a random sound rather than the same one over and over again. Perfect. Uh, and then some other cool things you can do uh, is the uh, move blocks. This is what you would normally use uh, for a team. Uh, the first block you want to do is the speed block that sets the speed of your motor. You can set it to whatever you like. Just do four. Um, then you want to choose a direction. So you can make it go spin left or right, whichever one. So there are different blocks. You can pick up and use either of those, but you can also, after you place it, you can just click on the actual arrow uh, and it will um, just change it. Automatically change it. Okay, great. So it's it's a little faster than dragging from the bottom. If yeah, you want exactly. Uh, next, you want to get the hourglass motor, uh, which is just telling it to run for a specific amount of time, uh, you know, two seconds, whatever. Uh, and then the last block you're going to need is the stop motor block, which is, as it suggests, it just stops the motor from moving and ends the, the program. Okay. So we don't have a motor with us connected, but um, we can, can see how it highlights each, each yeah. block so as it moves through. Quite convenient for figuring out where your program might be failing or not getting past um, in a debugging stage. And then lastly, just a little bit of a fun thing you can do is you can uh, use these uh, image blocks in conjunction with the loops to make some cool stuff happen. Uh, we're gonna use a randomizer again, just to make it a little bit more interesting. And do something like this. 
to change where the uh, image goes or if we want to put it away so we can make it small, we can make it big. Um, and then if we play this, it will show us some random images five times in a row. Something you can do to make this even more interesting is if you add a weight block at the beginning. And then instead of waiting for a specific amount of time, you can change this out for a sensor block, either an IR or a gyro. Um, and then what this will do is it will wait until this action happens. So if the gyro tilts, um, I think this to the left, um, then it will uh, go past this block and will run the, the next program. Uh, next bit of the program right and because we don't have it connected to a we yeah. do it's going to stop there because it's still waiting for that input which it's not getting yep and as soon as you take it out it will start going yeah so these are the common blocks you can just click and drag them just like any other block um you can type in them uh, whatever you like uh, and basically what you use these for is mainly just keeping track of what your program actually does and um, you know, if you forget what it does after a couple of weeks, when you come back, that's fine. Uh, you can read these and you'll have a good idea of what it does. Uh, but it also helps with uh, other teammates. If one teammate programs something and then your other teammate comes and he doesn't know where it is, um, he can look at the, the comments, read them, and have a decent understanding of what it is. So uh, this software is really nice in that way that it actually saves your program automatically. So if we go back to home, uh, it's loading, and it will uh, keep it right here. So these are all your past projects. You can have, I'm not sure if there's a limit to it, but I've never hit it, there is. Uh, you can also change the name of your program by clicking the little pencil here, and in the box, uh, you can change it there. Uh, there's also the copy program feature, so if you want to change something and keep a, an earlier version, you can do that. Uh, and then finally, there's also the delete if you want to remove the program. Great. Um, okay, so I guess another thing we should talk about is when you're at a festival or if you're in a classroom setting where there's multiple teams, how can we ensure that our program is going to be um, working with the right WeDo 2.0? Mm -hmm. So first connecting to WeDo 2.0. In the program here, there's the blue button, top right, a little Bluetooth symbol. Once you click on that, it'll give you a demonstration of how to do it. Um, you just have to make sure the Bluetooth is on on your device whether it be tablet or computer and then click the button when there's batteries inside of your inside of your robot uh, and it will start flashing uh, and then will show up here you can click on it to connect after you connect the first time you can change the name of the robot so that it's distinguishable from other ones uh, and uh, that will stop you hopefully from <laughs> For, downloading programs to uh, other bricks on it or for connecting right so the programs themselves so where are those actually stored yeah so uh, they're they're stored on your actual computer so you don't necessarily need to use the we do uh, the same we do over and over again uh, you can just run it from for any of them as long as you're connected to it so if you're looking to challenge yourself just a little bit more this you might consider as your next step Try writing your own program that uses each different type of block. Experiment, move them around, try different plugins to them, and uh, try incorporating loops, and just really explore and have fun. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and look for other videos in this series. For more information about the First Lego League Explore program and first programs for other age groups, visit www.firstroboticscanada.org. Until next time, continue to explore First Lego League Explore and happy building.